Hello once again, my people, it is I, Veed, and welcome back to Repeat. The wig was too much. You're gonna have to deal with my fucking messy-ass green hair, sis. Um, last episode, we went on our first date night with sis. Uh, it ended up with him being allergic to oysters. So we have to somehow fix fix that shit. So it's gonna be great. It's gonna be fine. We just need to make this perfect. Uh, thud. Ugh. Oh, jeez, Veed, you, you keep falling on your face days. You keep falling on your face days? What? These days? Are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. What were we doing again? Uh, we were grabbing food from the buffet. Are you sure you don't want to sit down and grab a glass of water or something? No, I'm fine. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, anyway, time to choose what to eat. Okay, so it's not oodle, so we have to go with caviar. Since it's a fan fancy restaurant, we might as well try the fanciest thing they've got, right? You mean that weird bubbly stuff? It's caviar. It's like the fanciest thing along among fancy things. Uh, so yeah, if we chose that, then we would have had to, um, if we chose the other one, he was, he's allergic to oysters apparently, which I thought, oh no, this is going to be the right one. Uh, it's caviar. It's the fanciest thing among fancy things. Sissel poked the container of caviar at the buffet table suspiciously. It looks kind of weird, honestly, but might as well try some new things while we're here. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Sissel and I grimaced and simu uh, simultaneously put our spoons down, most of our food remaining untouched. This, uh, tastes like stale jizz. Oh my god, me! Fucking me! I poked the caviar with my spoon. The little bubbles burst with a satisfying pop. Sissel flushed pink. How did you know what that taste? How do you know what that tastes like? Oh my god! Because we're secretly a slut! <laughs> I gave him a wink. The red on Sissel's face spread all the way up to his ears. I can give you a demonstration later tonight if you'd like. We should probably get some more food first. You know, real food, since you don't like the stuff and whatnot. Yeah, it does taste pretty bad. Sissel's ears dropped, uh, drooped a little. Y yeah, I probably should have asked what kind of food you liked first before bringing you on a date. Hey, now, just because the caviar tastes like wet socks doesn't mean I'm not having a good time. They're fun to squish, like bubble wrap. Oh my god, we're making it, we're making light on the situation. Another ball of caviar burst under my spoon with a pop. A restaurant pastron sitting behind us suddenly scoffed loudly. I glanced at her tiredly. Her oversized hat and puffy dress loomed over us threateningly, like an over-inflated puffer fish caught in, need of, uh, caught in a net of seaweed. Go fuck yourself, cunt. Go fuck yourself, Kristen. In hindsight, this was a rather fitting sight of that very illegal seafoods. Of course, an uncouth peasant in rags would, wouldn't would recognize true finery when they see it. Uh, oh, sorry, we didn't mean any offense. Why do you even come to this establishment if it's so obviously out of your league? Sissel f uh, Sissel's face flushed as he sank deeper in his seat, suddenly uh, fascinated by the candles. Oh, that's more... That's much more befitting behavior for you. Oh, no. Yo, pufferfish lady. Do you know how... It, uh, do you know it costs zero dollars to shut your fucking trap? My boy is perfect, and you can shove your finery up your ass. Maybe pull your head out while you're there. The patron gapped at me with a little utterly scan uh, scandalized expression. Hey, maybe you shouldn't mess with the rich folks around here. The pufferfish uh, patron was with red and... The pufferfish patron with red with was red with fear oh girl i know that this came out but it's this <laughs> she turned towards the front desk no doubt ready to complain to the restaurant staff without thinking i grabbed the straw from my ridiculous coffee drink and spitballed a piece of caviar with all my strength the wad of caviar sailed across the restaurant with master precision and hucks right at the puffer fish lady's throat bitch sis fucking me she stared in shock as the patron fell to the floor gagging and choking like a flopping landlocked fish Oh dear, it seems like the fancy caviar is disagreeing with our good friend here. Might as oh, might one of your waiters escort her away with some medical professionals. I realized my attempt at fancy speak must have sounded like shit when Sissel started cackling hysterically. <laughs> What's with the accent all of a sudden? Tis how prim and proper folks speak, is it not? Forgive me, I am not very fluent an asshole. <laughs> you sound like you've got a frog stuck in your throat. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, she sounds worse. 
shouldn't we call for help? It'd be a bummer if you got arrested for murder on our first date. Ugh, I guess. Wanna grab some more food while we're at it? This caviar is fun, but not really filling. Sounds good. I'm still pretty hungry. I glowered over the pufferfish lady hauntingly as we got up from our table. Being rich has made you weak! <laughs> Me! Oh my god. See, I'm gonna be the rich that's like Jeffree Star where I'm all powerful, but I'm still humble. Uh, this bitch is just weak. <laughs> v, please stop harassing the rich. No promises. Being rich has made you weak! <laughs> oh my god. Oh, shit. Hey, girl, what's up? The night air outside very legal seafoods wasted over the suites with a comfortable chill. Hallie stood outside the entrance, staring vacantly at the stars as the minutes slowly ticked by. She sighed and took a seat on the sidewalk. There was probably no need to stand watch. The remnant was shredded to pieces yesterday. It was unlikely to cause them any trouble tonight. Oh, right! She fucking murdered it! But she did say it was gonna reform. No. Perhaps she just didn't want to sit and watch Ginny and her friends goofing out of the, their, off on their little dates. The sight of everyone laughing together, Hallie felt the gears in her mechanical heart grind uncomfortably in her chest. There was a time when she was by Ginny's side like they were, laughing and feeling the bubbly warmth of joy thumbly, uh, thumbing in her chest. Now there was only a dull mechanic, uh, metallic chill. Hallie sighed again. Oh no, this is so sad now. One day, this repeating nightmare will end, and her days of joy with Ginny will be reality again. <laughs> Fuck off! Oh my god, I'm fucking done with you! A gurgling laugh suddenly cut in night. Hallie was instantly on her feet and alert. Where? Oh, you have got to be joking. <laughs> Go fuck yourself, dude. I'm not here for you. The disembodied head of the remnant drag dragged itself down the street towards her. There was still raw tears in its skull, which was barely attached to his neck and stubbled on a torso. Still, it cackled mana uh, maniacally. I don't know how to say the fucking word. Manically? As it dragged itself across the ground with its chin. It's been barely a day. How did you regenerate so quick? The remnant merely laughed from its, uh, from its pathetic position on the ground. You can't change the events of time that easily. The daffodil will burn just as before. Oh. This nice will be cursed hence. There is nothing you can do to change it. You know, I'd be more intimidated if you weren't ba or if you weren't basically a talking soccer ball crawling on the ground. Silly words won't help you this time. So no matter what, Jenny's gonna die. Oh yes! Hallie's foot connected with the Revenant's face with a satisfying crunch! Yes, bitch! Fucking work! A small, content smile spread across Hallie's face as she watched his head sail into the night sky over the distant tree line and finally out of sight. A few more moments passed before the Revenant's screaming abruptly stopped with a soft thud. Hallie dusted herself off its, uh, inside. It said herself offside. Shiro Koi, you need to make a little bit of grammar fixes. Hire me, I'll do that for you. Ugh, finally. Peace and quiet. My my, if it didn't get know any better, I think you got your sense of humor back. The world seemed to slow to a halt. Hallie turned around to see Ginny stroll out of the restaurant with a wry laugh and a root beer float in hand. Does Ginny recognize her? Ginny, you can see me again? Something about dying over and over again really jogs my memory. Ginny shrugged and took a sip of her root beer. Anyway, how are you all up? Hallie swallowed the lump in her throat and stared at her wisher for several long moments. I... I'm still here. Still failing. And you're still here too. Hallie buried her face in her hands. She wasn't supposed to be feeling anything, damn it. No, it's okay to feel stuff. Ginny can finally fucking see you. Ginny sighed and pulled a paper bag out of her jacket. I've got some of that free bread in the restaurant. You want any? Will you please take this seriously? You're going to die again. Hey, it ain't all bad. I got to eat at a five-star restaurant this time around. Hallie pulled her own hair in frustration. She was always like this every damn time. Jenny took another sip of her soda and sat down next to Hallie on the sidewalk. Hey, 
Why didn't you do anything to help Veed in the previous timeline? Hallie growled. You know why. Because you like being uptight? I'm keeping you alive. Every action I take as a wish reduces what little time you have left. I shouldn't have even fought the Remnant yesterday. My transformation easily took off a good chunk of your lifespan. If you didn't step in, things would have gone horribly wrong, just like last time. You did the right thing. Even at your expense? Yes. Hallie fell quiet. The night air was heavy and silent while, Jill while Jenny cheerfully sipped at her on her soda. So no matter what, Ginny is going to die. No matter what. So what are you going to do tonight? Hmm? The remnant was just here, wasn't he? He said he cursed this night. Something bad is going to happen, isn't it? Ugh. Yeah. The daffodil will burn. Hallie left it, let out a frustrated sigh. This is why I hate prophecy-type wishes. Once they say something will happen, there's not much I can do to change things. Ginny finished her soda and shrugged. You know what's fun about prophecies? They're like dumb fortune cookies. You can interpret them however you want, and no matter what happens, they'll still somehow make sense. Even horrible endings can have some upsides too, right? Everyone dies at some point, but life's still worth living. She gave Hallie a friendly slap on the back before turning to stroll back inside the restaurant. Try and have fun with it, will ya? Oh no, I'm gonna fucking cry, dude. Like, I'm not okay. I don't want Jenny to die. She's fucking cool. Ugh, she's probably like a Libra. Yeah, I'm fucking cool. Hallie watched her retreating back until it disappeared into the shining, until the shining doors of the luxury restaurant. Her gaze rose up and stared at the extravagant fa fa uh, facade of very legal seafoods. Had fun with it, huh? A small idea began forming in her mind. The constant tick, tick, tick inside her chest suddenly sped up and Hallie almost laughed. She p supposed her sense of humor might come back after all. Oh, but I don't want Ginny to fucking die. That's the thing. At some point, Cicel and I got separated while, per while perusing the sea of buffet tables again. Despite my attempts to fully enjoy my night, the longer I stayed in this restaurant, the shadier the place felt. There were ants crawling underneath the tables, the food looked just slightly too old to be healthy, not to mention the overworked, uh, overworked waiters with massive eye bags. Yeah, see, like, there, this is like, yes, five-star restaurant probably, but like, they're probably like not up to health code, and they probably, ha they probably have some like secret shady shit going on to keep their five stars at that. Poor things. Speaking of suspicious. Oh, hey bitches, what's up? Yo, Veed, how's your date going? Ginny and Philip cheerfully shoved their way through the crowd of disgruntled restaurant patrons. Uh, many shot disgusted looks at the fluffy pigeon perched in Philip's shoulder. Oh, but the pigeon is so fucking cute. Philip nonchalantly flipped them off while feeding his pigeon scraps from the from the buffet table. Hey guys, the date's going. Cecil's so sweet, but everyone at the restaurant's treating him like shit. Plus, this whole place just feels very fishy. Well, yeah, it's a seafood restaurant. No, like, there's some shady shit fucking going on, Ginny. I fucking hate you two! <laughs> Philip and Ginny instantly exchange high fives. Ah, <laughs> uh, puns. You've achieved comedy. <laughs> the pigeon on Philip's shoulder squawked in disappointment. Well, Veet's not wrong about the fishy part. Owen and I got bored and started digging up some dirt on this restaurant. Apparently, it's owned by one of the Lorelei's, one of Owen's distant layabout cousins. He buys seafood from illegitimate sources for cheap and then pays off the health inspectors when they show up here. Oh, that explains why I found a moth in my salad. <gasps> no, that's not okay, sister! That's not even seafood, that's just lettuce. Can't say I'm totally mad, though. I'd, <laughs> it'd be more angry if he wasn't uh, duping all the rich people and paying bank for cheap garbage. But then again, it's the Lorelei's. Owen's probably the only one with semi-functional morals in, the mess of, on this, in that mess of a family. Say, you and Owen seem to be getting along real well nowadays. Should I expect to chaperone a date for you two anytime soon? Philip snorted in surprise. Me? And Owen? <laughs> well, I guess crazier things have happened. Nothing's, gonna, nothing's going on between us. I've just been helping him with family stuff lately. 
We have grown pretty chummy, though. Philip pondered the idea absentmindedly while handing a chunk of crab leg to his pigeon. I watched in fascination as the bird choked it down, shell and all. Oh my god, this pigeon. What, what was that thing made out of? Anyway, enough about Philip. You had any plans for the rest of your day? Like, probably, like, a little bit of, like, fucking on the side? Like, what's going on? <laughs> you two look like you're having fun, but I gotta admit, the mood's been feeling a bit down on Sissel's end. That's because the fucking restaurant's full of garbage people. God, I thought we'd have more fun just the two of us spent the rest of the day tearing this place down. Philip nodded slightly in agreement. There's nothing quite as cathargic as making rich people uncomfortable. Don't you want to grab some more food while you're here, though? Jenny was interrupted. Oh. Is that the ambulance to come pick up the fucking rich lady? Uh, puffer fish lady? Jenny was interrupted by a sharp wail of an ambulance siren. The three of us stared as a team of EMTs hastily ushered one of the patrons out the door whilst yelling something about food poisoning. On second thought, maybe don't. Oh, food poisoning. On second thought, maybe don't. Oh my god. It was starting to rain outside. The sound of heavy raindrops soon filled the restaurant as occasional flashes of thunder filter, uh, flittered across the night si uh, sky. Oh my god, I can speak. The place was starting to feel deary, and Sissel was still nowhere to be found. After some worried searching, I spotted Sissel standing off in a lonely corner of the restaurant. No, Sissel! He was staring up the ceiling, completely lost in thought. I anxiously hurried to his side. Hey, man, is everything alright? What are you looking at? I followed his gaze and started to a halt. Is that a wasp nest on the ceiling? There was indeed a wasp nest on the ceiling of very illegal seafoods, and a surprisingly large one at that. Oh my god, sis, we need to get the fuck out of this restaurant. Now that we were further away from the low hum of the buffet tables, I could clearly hear the sharp buzzing of angry paper wasps. How did nobody at the restaurant notice this? I let out an impressed whistle. Damn, this place is a disaster. Sissel drooped his head almost shamefully. Yeah. Hey, listen. Sorry for how shitty the night's been. Huh? What are you talking about? Basically everything. I thought I'd impress you with all this fancy stuff, but all I've done is bring you to a crap restaurant filled with awkward rich people and shitty food. We are going to have a nice night together, but nothing's been going right. He sighed and slumped down in a nearby chair. I... I've been wanting to ask you out for a while now, but never really got the confidence. There's just not much impressive about me, you know? Yeah, I won a small culinary contest. Big deal. I was too chicken to ask you out like a normal person. I'm too poor to take you to fun places without help. I'll probably never get a big fancy job like these guys. Cecil waved his hand towards a myriad of handsomely dressed men and women in the restaurant. He turned towards me, a mixture of confusion and bitterness swimming across his face. Face, I've got not- OH NO! I've not- Oh my god, have I seen this sprite before? Because I don't remember it. Oh no, please be happy boy, I fucking love you. I've got nothing, to be honest. I'm not worth this. what you even see in me? I stood by Cecil's side, uh, side in a still silence for several moments. He couldn't meet my gaze, his head slumped and staring into his feet dejectedly. You know, you're probably right. This restaurant's kind of shit, your clothes are kind of old, and you're probably never going to be rich enough to be my sugar daddy. Oh no, don't pull the sugar daddy card. Uh, uh, hey now, didn't stop me from having fun with you tonight. I've been having a great time. Sissel's ears twitched as he slowly raised his head. I grinned and plopped down in the seat next to him. You know what I like most about you, Sissel? It's not money or fancy food or you winning a big trophy. It's despite life dealing you a bad hand again and again, you still work so damn hard to move forward. It's admirably- it's admirable, really. Sissel opened his mouth to protest, but I quickly booped him on the nose. Oh my god, we're so fucking cute! <laughs> you keep saying that you're not worth this, but when I see you working so hard to improve your life, caring so much, that you take me to the fanciest restaurant in the city, and even dressing up in whatever silly thing I suggested just to make me laugh. I feel like the luckiest guy alive to be by your side, you know? Why can't I have this fucking kind of relationship, bitch? What the fuck? 
I grabbed Sissel's hand and leaned forward, making sure he couldn't look away from me. With a big goofy smile on my face, I pressed our foreheads together with a laugh. You're worth everything to me, Sissel. Don't ever doubt it. Sissel's eyes widened. He stuttered for a moment before smiling at me ga uh, bashfully. Uh, you really mean it? Thanks, Veed. Uh, honestly, I wanted to say the same thing for you for so long. So much shit has been happening in my life, but you've always been by my side supporting me. I was always afraid that there's nothing about me worth supporting. B but being around you makes me feel... braver. He scratched his head and blushed. Yeah, I know that sounds fucking cheesy, but I am living for the fucking cheese, bitch! Like, put some parmesan, some fucking, uh, shredded, uh, shredded cheddar, some fucking, like, uh, that stringy cheese shit. Give me all of it. You make me feel braver. Brave enough to just be me. Like, someone worth being. He let out a shy laugh. I guess I've been too scared. Th that's the wrong two, Shiro. J hire me. I will be your fucking grammar Nazi. I swear to God. I guess I've just been too scared to embarrass it until now. He leaned forward and pulled me into a tight, warm hug. We stood there for several long minutes, just embracing each other's presence, wide smiles beaming on our faces. After a moment, Sissel let go and glanced at the clock excitedly. Well, the night's still young. You want to ditch this lame place and go somewhere else? Let's restart- let's restart- Restart it- oh my god, Shirokoi? Shirokoi? <laughs> I'm gonna be DMing you right after this episode airs! <laughs> let's restart this day in a more honest way and do things we both love. I'd love to, but- I gave Sissel a sly grin, but first, I want to get kicked out of here in a spectacular fashion. Uh-huh. I pulled out the large chunk of free bread from my pocket while eyeing the wasp's nest. How good is your throwing arm? Sissel gaped at me in honor to believe we are going to knock down the wasp's nest and sting everyone here. You're not serious, are you? Dude, listen. Every single goddamn waiter, staff, and customer at this place has been an unspeakable asshole to you, and I've had it. Tonight, Very Illegal Seafoods is going down. Sizzle glanced between me and the buzzing wasp nest, clearly tempted by the thought of sweet revenge. We're gonna get in so much trouble if we get caught. It'll make one hell of a first date! I'd feel kind of bad for everyone here, though. He paused, as though replaying all the events of tonight through his head. All the snide remarks, the upturned noses, the pompous sneers. On second thought, this place kind of deserves it. And then Sizzle chucked the bread at the ceiling as hard as he could. The effect was immediate. The bread roll smacked with the hide with an aggressive thwack, smashing it instantly. Bits of hide entered shower, uh, showered the dessert table with several well-dressed customers were poking about. Screams and clouds of angry wasps filled the restaurant as all the patrons shrieked and shambled over each other in panic. There are bees in my hair! <gasps> They're wasps, you uncultured swine. They apparently couldn't hear me over the ruckus of fleeing customers and clattered the silverware, as half the uh, restaurant's tables were overturned in a customer stampede. Serves them right. I grabbed Sissel's hand, the two of us exchanging mischievous grins as we discreetly scooted towards the exit. I could see Philip, Owen, and Ginny watch us from the distance in disbelief. The three of them quickly scrambled after us towards the exit, narrowly dodging the scampede of screaming and wasp-stung customers. Sister. At this point, the dining area was a panic zone for shrieking patrons and scattered food. Several patrons uh, slipped on the food splattered across the floor, which further fueled the ruckus. The restaurant staff did their best to calm people down, but to no avail. There's a fucking wasp nest growing on your fucking ceiling! Like, what the fuck, bitch? That's not okay! <laughs> Sirs, moms, please remain calm. These are just bees. They're wasps, you uncultured swine. They're quite friendly, so long as you don't swat wasps. They were wasps. And unlike bees, wasps were infernal creatures who do not understand the concept of mercy. Any sense of order has collapsed as customers and staff alike shrieked and scrambled towards the exit like headless chickens, while their cloud of angry wasps chased after them in a hot pursuit. Despite the mayhem, Sissel and I couldn't help but laugh at the once prim and proper guests running for their lives. Speaking of which, we should probably get out of here. We were almost at the door when suddenly an anguished wail echoed through the building. My daughter! I forgot my daughter! Oh no! You mean your bird? 
my daughter! <laughs> okay, Philip. I glanced over my shoulder. Philip's pigeon was still at their table, neck deep in a glass of red wine that was you that was that it was using as a makeshift bird bath. I fran a frantic staff member suddenly stepped on the tablecloth, pulling it down and causing the pigeon to tumble out of its drink with the grimace of a wet sponge. Oh no, poor pigeon. Uh, is the pigeon drunk? Is the pigeon drunk? Squawk! The pigeon popped up with a much in uh digni with as much indignity a pigeon its size could muster. In a drunken rage, it flew over every single dining table in the restaurant and knocked over every candle it could find. Oh my fucking god, this is going as a disaster. The restaurant was suddenly a line of wall of flames that spilled over the dining area on the ocean tide. No! Ginny's gonna fucking die in here! One of the restaurant managers broke down in tears and let out an anguished cry. Satisfied with its work, the pigeon flapped towards the exit and landed boastfully on Philip's shoulder. Oh, thank God you're safe, Holly. Uh, Squawk! <laughs> Your bird is a menace. I know, right? Isn't she great? She's probably going to charge with murder and get thrown in bird jail. Philip shrugged. It's fine. It's starting to rain outside anyways. Nobody's going to die. I think. You say that and now... Fucking Ginny's gonna fucking die. At the point, all the restaurant guests and Stad made their smart decision of evacuating the whole building. All that was left was a mass of angry wasps and sea of fire that spread across what remained of the dining hall. Cicely and I were already outside, staring at our handiwork through a window. The first date went way better than I first thought. I fucking love you, man. <laughs> love you too, Veed. But, uh... The fire spreading towards the liquor table. Oh, yeah, we should probably move back a bit. Holy shit! <laughs> Burn, indeed. Holy fuck. That night, on our first date, Cicely and I put an end to very illegal seafoods. The fire danced against the night sky in a romantic glow and ashes and embers of the ruined restaurant slowly drifted down to earth. Cicely and I fled the building safely across the rest of the customers, laughing gleefully the entire way. Nothing else in the world seemed to matter anymore. No judgment, no expectations, and especially not that accursed restaurant. But where the fuck is Ginny? It was just the two of us having the time of our lives. A clap of thunder shook the air as rain fell from the sky, soaking the two of us in a wet embrace. My hands were still firmly clasped as Sissel's and, uh, in Sissel's as I turned to stare at him, my heart skipping a beat. Sissel stared back with a silly grin on his face. Suddenly, he pulled me close to him and leaned over me. His face soft with a fond look. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Am I gonna get copyrighted for this? I really hope not. So, that was one hell of a first date, huh? I had a blast. Thanks for bringing me out here, sis. Uh, of course. I'm always happy to be with you, Veed. Sissel let out a shy laugh before leaning close to me. But you know, there's still a little something that we can do to make it even more romantic. And a little something I still need to say to you. <laughs> Smooth. I think- I have to kiss me through the rain, oh bitch! I think I know just what you're getting at. I chuckled and pulled Sissel a little closer. The two of us simply stared at each other in a solid minute, too shy to make the first move. There was a long pause before Sissel laughed and finally pulled me closer to his chest. Hey, Vid. I love you. Oh! Cry. Ah, my fucking little gay heart! <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh no! I pulled up my pop figure, my pop filter. Oh my god! I'm so gay. <laughs> Shirokoi, you better stop! Oh my god! I hate this. I love this. Oh, Shirokoi, if you need voice actors, hit a bitch up. Sissel blushed a light pink before leaning forward and planting a light kiss on my lips as very legal seafoods burned to the ground behind us. I leaned into his kiss, blind to the embers and rain that fell from the sky around us, focusing only on the wonderful man in front of me. This was truly the most beautiful night, fire and all. Oh man. The two of us broke out of our kiss breathlessly staring at each other before breaking out in a hearty laughter. 
that that felt really nice. Oh, Sizzle! <laughs> oh, you're too darn cute. Okay, there's Ginny. Oh my fucking god. Okay. Meanwhile, Jill, uh, Ginny, Philip, and Owen watch us from a distance. A satisfied smile uh, settling across their faces. <laughs> Look at the two of them. Looks like Sizzle's finally starting to grow a healthier sense of self-worth. And they all thanks to Veed. Overall, I'd say we chaperones did a pretty good job tonight. <laughs> as you say, as fucking a building is like on fire right behind you. Ginny, everything's on fire. <laughs> uh, it's a restaurant owned by my family. The darn thing deserves to go down. Plus, nobody died. That's a pretty good strong positive. Fine, fine. I guess the night went pretty well, all things considered. I don't think I've ever seen Sicily or Veed so happy before. Philip glanced at me and Cecil in the distance with, uh, with a smile before pulling Ginny and Owen away. Let's leave those two lovebirds alone for now. They deserve their privacy. We gotta fuck later! <laughs> I wasn't sure how long Cecil and I stood together, simply melting into each other's embrace. All I knew was that he felt warm and safe, and everything felt right. Cecil laughed and pulled me into a closer hug, nuzzling my neck fondly. So, uh... We didn't actually eat much during that date, did we? <laughs> Wanna drop by the cafe and grab a bite to eat? And then maybe we can do more fun stuff together? We're gonna fuck! <laughs> I grinned and gave Sissel a light peck on the cheek. We both blushed and laughed. Sounds like a great way to end the night. Need the way, sis. Oh my god, if this- No, I wanna keep going. I wanna keep going. Shirokoi, you fucking bitch! <laughs> Shiroko, you fucking bitch! <laughs> oh my god! Okay, author's note, yes. Hello, I am Shirokoi, artist and writer of this visual novel. Yes, Shirokoi, I follow you on Twitter. I'm a Patreon. Actually, no. No, I'm not. <gasps> I need to be. I just don't make a lot of money. Um, uh, Yes, I follow you on Twitter. We sometimes exchange a little bit of something something on Twitter. Yes, hello, hi, how are you? Thank you for playing repeat. I hope you liked it so far. I love it, bitch. If you're feeling generous and would like to help create me more updates on this visual novel, please feel free to support me on Patreon! It really helps me out as an artist slash writer and allows me to continue creating content for this visual novel for free. Click here at my Patreon. My social medias include Twitter and for affinity. I follow you on both. Hi. Thanks again for playing. Oh man, now I have to wait. All right, sis. <laughs> All right, sister. Fucking, you're gonna have to just like... Fuck! <laughs> yeah, you're just gonna have to wait with me, sis. Like, damn. Uh, make sure to hit the like, comment, subscribe, and subscribe down below. You know, help a fellow YouTuber out. Make sure to hit that notification bell so that way you don't miss up on any of my uploads. And I will see you in the next episode. <laughs> Goodbye! <laughs> I actually didn't say any of my other shit. Whatever! Bye!